and that is Chindit there. That is the Dark Angel to you, Rob. I like him because he's bought and paid for it. That's Julie today. Good moving horse. Richard, uh, how have the horses been doing over the winter? Going very well, Mike. We sold all our yearlings, which is normally the, the primary aim. And then, you know, we go into the winter, just going slowly, slowly. And now we, we're coming out of it. It doesn't feel like it, but we are. Yeah. Um, all going very well. Yeah, there's some lovely two-year-olds there. Chindit, Snow Lantern, Etonian, Fancy Man. That's a nice horses to look forward to, hopefully. Yeah. And you're into your eighth season now. Time flies on. Yeah, it's gone very quickly. And it feels to me like it's two or three years, which is just funny, but I suppose you, it only happens when you're enjoying it. And you know, it's a, it's a great job. I'm very lucky to be here and have everything we've got. Dad's just behind me in the office. Um, so yeah, not a lot's changed, still doing the same job. And the team seem happy as always, so laid back here. Yes, they're very good at making out they are anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's a long winter and lockdown. You know what I will say about lockdown is, our staff, and I think racing staff generally, have been incredible. And we've hardly had a person off with, I don't think, I think it was only me that had COVID. I had to isolate for two or three weeks. And I don't think anyone else has had it. And, you know, they've all been exceptional, turned up every day. I know there's not a lot else to do, but they've been, they've been excellent. And you're feeling okay now? Everything's good? Yeah, it's fine. I actually felt fine when I had it, but just three weeks after, you, you would get, periods in the day where you just felt absolutely knackered you know yeah. and I've had a I've had one of the vaccines now so good. I'm nearly good to go good. can't wait for my pub passport <laughs> I'll be the first one in the queue for that <laughs> it's Al Bashir and Chindit it's the big two and Chindit and Al Bashir Chindit getting the better of Al Bashir as they race up towards the line in a high class champagne Chindit has won it now, what about the classic prospects for this year? I mean, Chindit um, looked a really good colt when he won the champagne at Doncaster. Yeah. Uh, and then he ran in the Dewhurst and didn't really fire that day. What was the reason for that, do you think? Well, I think that on that day, the, the times say the ground was riding like it was, like it was heavy ground. And he, him and Etonian both, you know, were wheel spinning the whole way. Um, Chindit came in, you know, traveling very well like he normally does. And he didn't pick up at all, but you know, I'm more than happy to forgive that run. He's working now, I think you'll agree, when you see the work that you've got this morning. He's got, he's got a lot of speed, a lot more speed than people think. Whereas to me last year, it looked like he wanted all of that seven when he won the Champagne Stakes mm. and he was crying out for a mile. I hope that's the case, but you know, the nice thing is now with a three-year-old, if you don't get the Guineas trip, you can come back to Royal Ascot for six. When they're racing, they, will, they go a lot quicker. It's a lot easier for them to settle, especially in Newmarket where they're in a straight line. Yeah. He's probably going to start off going over seven furlongs to Newbury for the, for the Greenham. Mm. And then assuming that he passes his test there, you know, he's a lot of our Guineas winners, especially in the last decade or so, have all got beaten in their trials. Sky Lantern did, Night of Thunder did, Bills and Brook did. You know, so it just shows that they really need that trial. And then they're not necessarily at their best, but they certainly show something. And what about Etonian? Is he, is he looking more a, sort of a 10 furlong type of horse now? I think definitely. On that yeah. work this morning, you know, he's not as fast as, as those other two. Motta KL is a very good horse and, and he's a seven furlong mile horse and he's older. Etonian, for me, has always wanted a trip because he has that exuberant action. He gallops and he's simply not as fast as horses like Chindit, however, He's going to go a mile and a quarter to Sandown, where he won his Group 3, and have a look at the derby. Julie's very keen, and rightly so, I yeah. think, to go further with him, because I, he does need it. He's very straightforward, he's grown. He, the very good horses quite often behave a little bit differently, and he's definitely guilty of that. He well, just has to prove he's very, very good now, that's all. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Um, it's good to see Julie here this morning. Another one of your long-serving patrons yeah. is Michael Pescott, who owns Chindit. Yeah. He's also got Fancy Man, who's a listed winner at two. Yeah. What's he been doing? How's he getting on? Well, when he won the listed race at Haydock, Ryan rang me and he said, he's a very good horse. And it's not really Ryan's language. He was saying nice horse, but when he says that, I thought, oh, that's good. So I rang Michael straight away. <laughs> and... He, he loves soft ground. He doesn't need it, but I think a mile and one in the Fielden right. at Newmarket is Perfect. going to be a lovely place to start him off, whether we come back in trip to a mile or whether we go up in trip to a French derby or something like that. 
we'll see. But that, of course, is pipe dreams at the moment. And on the Phillies front, I mean, happy romance last year. I, I love watching her progress. Yeah. Every she's time a, she turned up, she improved. She's an underrated filly. Do you know the people that own her? They have never, ever been to the races when there's been people that I met them coincidentally two years ago on Super Sprint down at Newbury in a lift. And he said he would like to come down and have a look. I said, well, just, you know, website, come down and give me a call any time. He came down, there was about 40 uh, yearlings to take a choice of. And him and his son and the rest of the family all chose this filly, Happy Romance. And they went to the Super Sprint, of course, nobody there. And then she went to the York sales race, won another fortune. Then she went to the group three at Salisbury, nobody there. You know, no one to stand and pat you on the back. And it's going to be weird for them when racing opens up. You know, it's going to be lovely, but I do think she is slightly underappreciated in terms of what she has achieved last year. That was, a, that was an awful lot to achieve in one year. And yeah. she was never a two-year-old for me. I always thought she's a, a big girl who's going to make a nice three-year-old and, and hopefully make a minor. And she's going to go to the Fred Darling. I think she'll be better for going further, our filly. And I think she's improved from two to three. So, you know, it's very hard to go back and beat those fillies that have already beaten you, but we're going to give it a good go anyway. And she's, she's a tough filly and she's very happy. Bannerman, Snow Lantern. And on the other hand, Snow Lantern only had the one run at two. This is the, the first daughter of Sky Lantern yeah. by Frank Orr. I mean, what a pedigree. And she, she looks in great form this morning. Yeah, she, she's a very exciting filly. But she does a lot. I've never known a, a, a horse be so like her mare. It's unbelievable. I, Hughesy came up and rode her about a month ago. I said, you've got to come and have a, look, have a go on this filly. I said, you'll think you're back in the days of Sky Lantern. And he rode her. He said, she's exactly the same. But he thinks she'll get further, which she might. Uh -huh. She's by Frankel. And she was second first time at Ascot. But you, are you amazed how much she's like her in, in appearance oh, as well? I've never known it. Yeah, yeah. The way she acts, the way she's built. Yeah. her temperament she's a little more aggressive in terms of the revs are higher throughout even when she's cantering you have to just is that hold the on to in her do you think i think definitely yeah they're yeah. a little bit they're a little bit eager the first colors of hamden amac to motor kale the near side motor kale with on the far side muda marsing and it's motor kale who goes on to win what about the older horses richard i mean we saw motor kale uh, this morning, helping out, and um, you've, yeah. you've cut him since we, we last saw him. We have. He's done very well. His form tailed off a little bit towards the end of last year. Yeah. But you know, he he was a Royal Ascot winner, and they get they get into your hearts when they start winning those races, and then a Bunbury Cup, which is a hell of a race to win. Uh -huh. And this year, you know, we can go right start at a listed race and work our way up. There's some lovely races for him, like there is for Oh, this is us, Mum's Tipple. You know, they're all of a similar level, but nice horses to hopefully back up a. A classic contender. Classic contender. Who wants contenders? You want winners, don't you? <laughs> really. <laughs> Mum's Tipple ran the other day at uh, Lingfield Championship Finals Day. Ran a, ran a good race. Beaten yeah. by a better one. And I don't think in racing we say that often enough. That right. was a good horse that beat us. Yeah. And we had no answer. We're still a very good horse. But wherever that goes, we, Avoid ain't, him. we ain't going. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> be a very hard horse to beat, I think. Well, you got him back anyway. Because exactly. that two-year-old that won at York looked exceptional that day, didn't I it? I remember. I remember that yeah. day when I think it was... Um, Enable's last run in the UK. And everyone, you'd think, leaving the race course would be talking about Enable winning. And all they could talk about was Mum's Tipple. It's the most amazing performance I've ever seen. I, I thought he might be third or fourth in the race, but literally he broke their hearts and won 13 lengths. Never seen one of ours win like that. Yeah. Before or after. But, you know, the last two races he's had has been his two races where he's, he's put a, together a similar performance. So Richard, it's great to see your dad here at the yard this morning. Um, how He's much... here every day. Yeah, good. Does he have much of a say in what's going on? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Do I get much of a say? Debatable. <laughs> um, yeah, he's here every day and it's lovely for him. You know, he can pick and choose what he wants to be part of. Knows um, the horses and what we should be doing, where we should be going. And yeah, because 40 odd years of experience is, is a long time. And how is he on giving advice and stuff? I mean, do you ask him or does he offer it? What, what, how does that I play don't out? Tend tend to feel I don't really need to ask yeah. <laughs> you know he, lets, he gives it yeah he does you know yeah. and you've got to welcome that yeah. whether you take it or not is is up to you but ignore it at your peril I suppose finally last question for you what would be your, your target for this year I suppose you've got to look 
for 150 winners mm. and he'd love to say you'd like a classic winner but you can't you can't you can aspire to those things but it's nearly impossible and if you do get one it's amazing and it, you literally don't need another winner for the rest of the year but it's like Royal Ascot. You have a winner on the first day, Tuesday, when, oh, sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Well done, Richard. Yeah, you're having a great week. Everything else since that has got flattened, but you know they don't look at that. So that's quite nice. And you're just to be in business and enjoying it and giving the owners a bit of success and some enjoyment and pleasure along the way.